they asked him, why are you doing this? I read an interview, it was amazing. He said, look, I'd always been a Republican, but he said, I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> he said, what is it, denying all this stem cell research and science and saying we don't care what happens to people and whether they live or die, we solve these big health care problems? Pretending that science is not real? Demonizing our opponents? Spending all of our time on issues that have nothing to do with how real people live, just so we can keep people torn up and upset, just so we can stay in power, even if we never get anything done? I couldn't take it anymore. I had to become a Democrat because I wanted to go to work. I say this with a heavy heart. Since I got out of politics myself, except to be the chief caseworker for the junior senator from New York, <laughs> I, one of the most rewarding things I have ever done in my life is the work I've done on Katrina and the tsunami with former President Bush. I love it. And even four days before the election, I'm not ashamed to tell you, I love him. And we have our arguments and our disagreements, but they're respectful, and I'm learning something from him, he's learning something from me. It's the way America's supposed to work. But the people that run Washington aren't like that. Bob Woodward's got this new book out about their Iraq policy making called State of Denial. Well, if you're an ideologue, denial is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. In fact, it's necessary. How do you survive otherwise? Because you can't be right about everything, but you've already got your mind made up. So all evidence is irrelevant and arguments are a waste of time. That's why they govern by assertion and attack. That's why they're going to have to run these grainy ads against him in the final days of the election. Because if you start thinking, he's going to win and the other guy's in big trouble. <laughs> so what they're trying to do is to trigger all this collective insecurity, all these accumulated cartoon-like images they have been working so hard for so long to implant deep in the psyche of Arizonans about who we are. But it's all denial. And the problem with denial and ideology is that you just ignore reality. There's another book that was written just a couple months before called The One Percent Doctrine about how they make foreign policy. And in this book, the author, Ron Suscott, interviewed all these people around Mr. Rumsfeld, the Vice President, and others. And they literally seriously referred to, not just to me, although I was included, but to good moderate Republicans like Secretary of State Powell and Admiral Scowcroft, who was the first President Bush's security advisor, as lesser political mortals because we are trapped in, quote, I'm not making this up, we are trapped in the reality-based world. <laughs> and in fairness to them, what they mean by that is we don't appreciate that America is an empire and that an empire can use power to change reality. And therefore, alas, we were consigned to lesser achievements. <laughs> well, you know, people ask me all the time, what great new economic idea did you bring to Washington to create 50% more jobs in your eight years than the previous 12 and have 100 times as many people who got problems? And we're going to be way better than that compared to this eight years. And I say, Arithmetic, that's what I brought to you. <laughs> I had this, this dumb old idea that if 2 plus 2 was 4 in Arkansas and Arizona, it'd probably still be 4 when I got to Washington. And sure enough, it was. Okay, so, but they, escaping the reality-based world, have fought arithmetic and added three trillion dollars to the debt we're going to impose on our children. Arithmetic won. They lost. Arithmetic won. Same thing happened in Iraq, you know. It was just going to be hunky-dory after Saddam fell, and getting rid of Saddam was easy. All the hard stuff happened later. We now have way over 90% of our casualties since mission was declared accomplished. Reality keeps winning. And I can say this because I wrote about it once. I was raised in an alcoholic home. I spent my entire childhood trying to get into the reality-based world. I like it here. <laughs> I think this is where we need to be. <laughs> and what I want you to know is all over this state, there are the people Jim Peterson talked about. There are lots of Republicans and independents who haven't voted for us in a decade or 
Maybe they'll vote for a governor, but oh, can they vote for a Democrat for president, senator, Congress? You know, and they really are like the kid on the diamond board. It's pretty scary if you've never jumped off before. And that's why we're saying this to you tonight. Because four years ago, what you had to do was have a humongous turnout here. And Janet told me that this county had the second highest voter turnout in the United States of America, which is elected. even more important and more challenging job. You got to do everything you did four years ago and spend the next four days looking for people standing on that diamond board. I mean, I'm telling you, when you go to work tomorrow, you go to school tomorrow, you go to the grocery store, look at people in the eye. They're your fellow Americans. I am sick of people being demonized. I tell people all the time, I never knew what a slug I was until I went to Washington. When I was a governor, my vote went up among Republicans every year. I really had to go all the way to Washington, D.C. to realize I was a lesser mortal. <laughs> People have finally, they're fed up with that. They run that old mangy dog out of the chute too many times, and we are ready to reject it. They are fed up with it. Look, the Democrats have a good security plan. Yes, we want to change course in Iraq to give it